Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a very fascinating game played by Serbian and Yugoslav chess grandmaster Svetozar Gligric. Gligric is on the black side and his opponent is international master Zvonomir Mestrovic. The game was played at 1970-71 Hastings tournament. But before starting our game make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. And now without further ado let's get started with our game and see what happened on the board. Mestrovic opened up with d4 and Gligoric responded with knight f6, knight c3, d5 and bishop g5. We have Richter Veres of attack which is like Rui Lopez opening mirrored on the queen side but of course these are completely different positions. With his last move, white is threatening to capture on f6, thus damaging black pawn structure on the king side. With knight bd7, which is the main continuation, black can act against that threat, or bishop f5 is also playable. But in our game, we have c5. Gligoric is inviting white to capture f6, which was played in the game. Bishop takes f6, g takes f6. Gligoric is recapturing on f6 with a g pawn, later will fianke to the dark squared bishop and that bishop can successfully safeguard black king. In here Mestrovic played e4, by the way d takes c5 won't give white anything because of this d4 move and if knight e4 then f5. Black is managing to gain a pretty nice counterplay, that's why after g takes f6 we have e4, d takes e4, d takes c5. Queen a5 and a dubious decision by Mestrovic, queen h5, yes guys. Dubious is back, but I have to tell you that instead of playing queen h5, it was better to play queen d2, unpin the knight and create knight takes e4 threat. But in our game we have queen h5, white is protecting his pawn on c5 from h5 square, but later we will see that the queen on h5 will be out of the game. Bishop g7 by Gligoric, bishop b5 check knight c6, knight e2, black castles kingside, a3, and this time we have f5. Gligoric strengthened his pawn on e4. Here we have castling kingside, queen c7, b4, bishop e6, rook d1, rook d8, bishop a4, and a5. Gligoric is challenging white's pawn structure on the queen side. Knight b5 was played well. b5 won't give white anything because of this knight e5 move and White will emphasize the vulnerability of the pawn on c5. That's why in our game we have knight b5, queen e5, c3, a takes b4, a takes b4, bishop c4. Already at this point black has an advantage and there are so many problems to solve for white. Look at this white queen. How is white going to bring into the game the queen? Rook takes d8 was played. Rook takes d8, knight d4, knight takes d4, c takes d4, queen f6. And now white got another weakness, this time the pawn on d4, rook c1, queen a6. Of course Gligoric could capture on e4, could remove the defender and then win a pawn, but in this case white is gaining some counterplays, managing to activate the queen. That's why after rook c1 Gligoric played queen a6. With a double attack, bishop d1 was played, this time we have queen a2. This was actually a very right decision. Gligorich activated his queen and now white is in trouble. h3 was played and bishop d3. By the way, still winning a pawn is not a good idea because in this case, after the exchange of queens, after the simplifications, the upcoming endgame actually gives white hope to survive. We have opposite color bishops and white can easily fight for a draw. That's why after h3 we have bishop d3, knight g3, and this time we have queen d2. A nice square for the queen, both attacking this rook and also creating e3 threat. Knight takes f5 was played, a cunning move. Now queen takes c1 can't be played because in this case white can gain advantage. If king f8 then queen takes g7 is coming and then queen g8 followed by queen takes f7. This is a very tricky line and favors white. If you win this bishop then simply king h2 and if rook e8 then knight d6 is coming. White is doing great and black is in trouble. That's why after knight takes f5 we have a powerful e3 move. Look at this guys. Already if you capture on 
e3 with a knight then. Gligoric can win this rook on c1. In here Mestrovich decided to keep on attacking, played knight takes e7, but these are desperate attempts, there is nothing white can do. King h8 was played, queen h4, and this time we have e takes f2 check. The pawn is untouchable because of this bishop takes d4. In our game we have king h2 and rook takes d4. White's position is totally lost, but in here Mestrovich tried his luck and made one last move in this game by playing queen g3. Now black has to be careful because if you go for an immediate pawn promotion and promote your pawn to a queen, then white has this devastating queen b8 check and you are getting checkmated. But of course, these are cheap traps and Gligoric saw this. After queen g3, he made a move and white resigned. I'm sure that you have already found that move and this time I won't ask you to pause the video because you saw that move. Yes, guys, the winning move in this position is going for a pawn promotion, but instead of promoting the pawn to a queen, Black is promoting it to a knight. Dark knight returns and after f1 knight check we have a resignation. White is suffering heavy losses and Black is winning easily. What a final move. Look at this guys. You are promoting your pawn to a knight and your opponent is resigning. In the end as usual a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find mate in 5. It's white to move and i will wait for your answer in the comment section thanks for watching here are more suggestions for you feel free to check them out as well i will see you in my next video take care